You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Do you solve your problems with two lightsabers at hand or one lightsaber and a blaster? How is the final Guardians film? How do we look at entertainment in light of Romans? What is Disney's obsession with releasing live action films of their animated products? What would you do if you found yourself trapped in a town where every night you would die if you went outside? We're going to be answering these questions today and more on our episode of What's New for Systematic Ecology. We are the priests of the geeks. I'm your host, Christian Ashley. I am joined today by my co-conspirator, my co-revolutionary in our never-ending quest to take down Joshua, Elizabeth Peng Clyde. How are you doing, Peng? Death to Joshua. I'm doing very well. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. And we are also joined by a very special guest host, and that, of course, being Pablo. Pablo, would you like to introduce yourself to the good people? Yeah, yeah. my name is Pablo. Um the executive director and outreach pastor at a local nonprofit here in San Diego called Tri-City Pantry, and also uh, a uh, fellow nerf herder, geek, nerd, aficionado. You add it on. I'm it. I love all things. Perfection. All right, guys, as we always do for these What's New episodes, we're going to start with a bit of a lightning round and actually get things done correctly this time around. We had some audio issues earlier a little glitching out. This time it's going to be done successfully and perfectly and not because of Joshua's editing, never because of that, but because we are all professionals here. And I'm going to start, of course, with uh, my first topic for the lightning round, which would be Gundam, the Witch from Mercury. Uh, like I had said before, before the recording kind of messed up, I am really loving this show as it keeps going on. We just had a major upheaval in how the cast is being handled. Uh, poor Suleta just got... Ah, betrayed and abandoned, and my boy Bob Guell Jet uh, Turk has gotten everything he's ever wanted, and it's all very hollow. And I love it when a character can get to that stage. Like I used to want these things, and now I, I want anything else but them. But this is the reality I have to live in. So, Peng, what else have you been geeking out on as far as your lightning round stuff goes? I have been geeking out over Demon Slayer, of course. We are six episodes in. It's the shortest 23 minutes of my whole entire week. I don't understand how five minutes is 23 minutes, but that's what the episode is. Animation is beautiful. Characters you love. Edge of the Sea every time. It's one of the highlights of my weeks, for sure. Oh, yeah. And a special shout out to Pastor Will Rose, who for the first time in his life saw a bit of Demon Slayer. We went to our little, uh, I think it was Baxter's, uh, Barcade is the location we went to while we were all in Chapel Hill for the convention. That was a ton of fun uh, hanging out there. He actually also got to see his first episode of One Piece, too, while we were there. I forgot to mention that last time. Which we episode? Which episode? Oh, it was a filler episode before Water 7. I'm, oh. I'm fairly certain. So a little unfortunate in that regard, but you know what? It works. Pablo, anything for you? Uh, right now, we're just going back to my childhood with my kids. So we're watching Transformers in the 1980s. She's really into the new new age and i have to show her what the real transformers look like and sound like so we've been swallowing up every season we've been doing uh, gi joe and um man I'm, I'm i'm probably older than you guys because you guys want to recognize my shows uh, but uh, i would say uh <laughs> yeah um you know find out to freddy is something that my kids are really interested in so every time they're interested in something i'm going to check it out just to you know, be a part of their lives so we're we're looking forward to that and also that amazing animation and anime of Fast and Furious, uh, I, that's what I consider it. I don't consider it an action okay. movie. I consider it more of a animation, you know, because it's just feats of un, you know. But yeah, that's that's what we've been we've, we've been at. Nothing new. We're we're taking back some time. Perfect. How many kids do you have? We have two: uh, a son that's seventeen and a daughter that's nine. And my daughter is a geek like me. So, you know, we're. We're into uh-huh. the whole thing, Wait, man. You said a son that was 17? Yeah, 17. Yeah, he's 17. You look fantastic. <laughs> I, I know. Thank you. I, it's all the beauty products and all the Star Wars I consume. It's uh, It doesn't die down. I mean, the more Star Wars you watch. The Force the more... is keeping you young. Yeah, the, the Force is with me. You know, I am with the Force. So uh, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just it is what it is at this point. I'm proud of it. I'm proud to wear it. <laughs> Perfect. All right, my last thing for the lightning round would be uh, the latest bits of episodes we've got from Vinland Saga. Uh, once again, I'm really hyped about this show. It keeps getting better uh, as things are coming to a head. We've got you know, essentially three different factions at work right now over this one tiny farm in, uh, I think it's Denmark we're in right now. I'd have to relook that up. But uh, we got King Canute. We've got Kettle and his uh, 
his workers at the farm, his delusions of power and grandeur. And we've got poor Thorfinn and his gang just trying to survive all this. Ah, man, Finland Saga just keeps getting better. Uh, I, after the season ends, I'm going to have to just catch up with the manga. I just can't wait anymore. It's just that good. So, paying anything else for you? Yeah, just speaking of keeping up with the manga, I also started watching. It's It just sounds so... It's one of those things I'm like, okay, I'm bored. Let me try it. Why Res- Relania ended up at the Duke's mansion. And it's about like... It's such... It's about six episodes and I could not wait. I just started reading like the webtoon of it. And it is one of the most romantic heartthrobs ever. And it, it just makes me... I say blush like a little anime schoolgirl, And that's... That's how you know it's real good. Okay. And so, yeah, it, it's great. It's one of those reincarnation um, animes, and I usually don't like those. But yeah. this is done with, like, an interesting twist to it. And so I honestly put it on because I needed something. I needed an English dub anime to go in the background while I did dishes. You know, like a good housewife I am. Just kidding. I know my place. <laughs> I just love jabbing at those, um, at that. But yeah, and I was hooked and I literally stopped doing dishes and put first things first and watched all six episodes in like one setting. All right. Well, if we have nothing else we want to add, let's go ahead and get into the meat and the discussion. The main topics. That, of course, number one being, for me, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which I am just about to finish. I know what happens because I read spoilers and I don't care about that, but... This game has been so much fun. To those who don't know what it is, I mean, if you don't know what Star Wars is, I'm sorry. There's only so much God can do to help you. But like Jedi Survivor is the sequel to Fallen Order, where you play Cal Kestis, a Jedi who survived Order 66. And through that, you end up finding a crew, you end up fighting against the Empire, and you find yourself in, uh, excuse me, Jedi Survivor five years later, and the fallout of all that, and the people you lost along the way, and trying to struggle in the midst of the Empire's height trying to take them down in this hopeless war. And you get a chance here, this chance of potentially finding this one planet away from everything else where the empire can't reach you. And that's where the story takes place as you unearth some secrets of the past. It kind of ties into the High Republic novels they're doing as well. Uh, I'm not as big into that stuff on that side of thing, but yeah, that is what it is. But as far as the game itself, I'm having a ton of fun. You keep your force powers from the beginning. This is the anti-Kingdom Hearts. Like, you just come in. You keep your abilities. You you are awesome. You just play awesome. It's a ton of fun. Check it out if you don't know. But actually, uh, one of the things that is prominent in this game is Cal kind of you know isolating himself to an extent to uh, avoid being hurt by some of the stuff that happened before from people that left him, you know, to do and pursue other things. Like, uh, let me ask my, my co-host here, like this theme of isolation, like is, is isolation ever a good thing? It depends. Cause I need my me time, but like isolation, I feel like is without connection at all. So I'm going to say no for me. Okay. Pablo. Well, we're not meant to do life alone. I don't think we were designed that way. For the beginning, God, you know, gave us an opportunity to name all the animals, you know, through through Adam. And he still didn't find a perfect partner. And then he found a perfect partner and a suitable partner in Eve. And then he had to multiply. So from that, I think um, isolation is bad. Having time to yourself, by yourself, is a good thing. You know, a time to meditate, a, t- a time to regroup and recharge batteries. So that's what I would say is isolation is not good, especially if you're going through some trials and tribulations, you know, you need the power of those who pave the road, those who are paving the road, you know, to, to correlate. So yeah, I don't think it's a, something that you should opt to. Sometimes we find ourselves in that situation. And the reminder is that God is always with us. You know, that's a promise, uh, an infallible Mm -hmm. promise of God in one of those character traits. So you're never truly alone, but you should never isolate, you know, because that's how the, that's how the hyenas hunt. You know, that's how the lions hunt is they wait for that one that is like, oh, doo-doo-doo, over there by themselves. You know, all of a sudden, they're a steak on a plate. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a great way of putting that. Uh, there's some nuance here. I think we've kind of hit on it a little bit, is that there are times you could be isolated by choice. Like, there's times I need to get away to recharge. As an introvert, ah, being around people just drains me. It's not their fault that that happens. It's just how I'm wired. So I need some time to just get away, you know, play a game or read a book or what have you. And then I can come back into those social situations and be recharged. 
Now, if that's all I do is I just stay away, there's a massive problem because like you mentioned, we, we are social creatures. God made us to interact with one another. We can't just ignore other people. And that's one of the things the game kind of hits, hits on is like, hey, you want to get away from all this pain? You want to get away from all these people? You can't do that. It's not good for you. So I would say like, uh, even though we do see positive portrayals of isolation in scripture, like we see Jesus when he wants to go pray, he goes off alone by himself so that he can focus on things, get in touch with God that way. But he doesn't stay there. So yeah, with that all in mind, that's one of the aspects of the game is that kind of theme of you know, removing yourself from things to avoid getting hurt. But I have another question, especially I know paying this unfortunately doesn't uh, qualify for you that much as a question. I know your Star Wars media fanship is very small and... But you guys did miss out on our watch party that we did on Discord. Pang joined me for that. That was a delight. But Pablo, it seems like you really into Star Wars. So you know a little bit about the, the lore and stuff. Do you think that too many Jedi survived Order 66? And that's a good question. I, uh, I, I think in order for... See, I'm a novel guy. So I, I read some of the novels. Uh-huh. Yep. So I, um, I got into Star Wars on the second release. Um, that was the, th- the, the, you know, like the 85, 86... Uh, I'm sorry, the 90s, uh, when, yes. when it was remade um, and they added a couple of minutes. Uh, so after that, I started getting into the novel. So I, I think that there's always that because it, usually it's a, it's, a reflect, it's a biblical reflection of what's going on. So, yeah, I think that there was not a handful of them. Usually is that, that section they're like, hey, we got to scatter, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> so I don't think it's a good thing, but I do think it's a good thing. So I think it's a bad thing because the ones who survive are for lack of a word, the cowardly kind of ran away. So that's what I'm concerned about, how that's going to be handled. But uh, yeah, I, I believe okay. some of them survive on an instinct, you know, <laughs> like on a getaway, yeah. let's get out of here instinct. So like one of the reasons I bring this up is that it's kind of one of those complaints kind of levied against old Legends canon, which is my favorite canon. And even as the newer canon expands on itself, uh, which sometimes I really like, sometimes I really don't. It's the idea of Order 66 was supposed to be this thing that brought the Jedi to their knees. The only two Jedi we see in the original series, of course, being Obi-Wan and Yoda. So it's like, you know, two survivors, that kind of makes sense. But like, oh, then suddenly there's a new one. Suddenly there's a new one. Suddenly there's a new one. And time goes on. Like, I get that criticism. I also realized that the Jedi Order was several thousand strong. So the fact that it's possible a lot of people could have made it out, I'm okay with that. And it's something that's brought up in the game, too. It's like uh, the Jedi to survive. What are they doing with their lives? So I would say as far as uh, the game itself is concerned, I'd play the first one first, then get into this one. This is about a nine, nine, five for me so far. We'll see how things go as I actually finish the game, but I'm really enjoying it. So our next topic was actually going to be one of Pang's, but she unfortunately did not have the time to actually watch Guardians Volume 3. But, My husband so, didn't take me on a date like I asked. Of, of course. That terrible, terrible man. Always, it's always, I'm always, just fault. kidding. It's always, <laughs> fault. it's always like I never. He always was. He's like, you never take ownership. It's always my fault. Yes. <laughs> what do you want? We admit it. I'm, I'm glad of, you get it. On behalf of all husbands, it's our fault. <laughs> it, <laughs> is, it is. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Ah, I'm gonna play so, this for my husband whenever yeah. Josh edits. Yeah, just you know, you let's go. just do the whole uh, political thing. Let's roll up the podium. You know, ladies and gentlemen. We apologize. Yes, for that too. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. <laughs> that, that was a lot of healing for me just now. Wow. Yeah. You're still not going to get to see it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. this weekend. All right. There you go. So have you seen the movie, Pablo? Yes, I have. A couple times. Okay. So. A couple times. Okay. A couple times. I watched it the other I, day. Yeah. So uh, I, what are your yeah, initial yeah. feelings? Uh, you know, um, I, I have this advice for all my friends. I said, I don't have money to make a movie. So I take every movie for what it is because I don't have the mental capability to write a script. So I appreciate the art behind it. Uh, th- this was one of the first movies that I actually teared up a little bit in the, in the uh, not even the death of uh, uh, Iron Man. You know, it was, it was, it was already foreseen or, you know, there was a lot of indications that that would happen, um, especially with the contracts that Robert John- Downey Jr. was doing. But um, this time, man, it got to me. Rocket screaming his heart out. You know, losing mm. his friends. Um, you know, this guy that uh, James Gunn was directing these movies. Um, he's a geek, so he understands. Yep. You know, he 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 doesn't take us for a uh, for a wild ride. You know, like expecting us to just consume it. 
Um, so I, I think it was an amazing movie. Well done. I, I, again, I don't have m- deep pockets to come up with a better movie. And if I did, I'll be like, all right, let's make them make a better one. But um, Adam Warlock yeah. was disappointing. I think the casting was amazing. Uh, I, I just I'll second that. Yeah, I would say, man, that dude is such a powerful character in the comic books. You know, uh, he should have been mm-hmm. he should have been in um, an Infinity War. You know, I, I think yes. that was one of the pivotal characters in the comic books. So for us to read it, you know, we see that for those who didn't, they're like, hey, without it, with it, it's fine. You know, but it, it was just one of those things that if I had an opportunity to to talk to them, be like, hey, who do you recommend? I think Adam Warlock. I, I don't like that they do that to certain characters you know, these powerful mm-hmm. characters, and then they minimize them to, you know, a, a back cover character, you know, uh, Adam Warlock is so powerful, you know, but yeah, yeah. Those, those are my thoughts. Yeah. I'll second a lot of that. I, I think I teared up around the same scene you're talking about there with uh, all this pain that Rocket has been keeping inside of himself. Like we knew there was something there, but to actually see it on screen is a different matter. And that's why Joshua ambiguity is never as good as the literal. Yeah, Josh. I don't even know what they're talking about, but yeah. <laughs> oh my oh, gosh. gosh. Yeah. Uh, it's always an amazing thing. Peng and I feed off of each other really well uh, when it comes to yes, anding each other. That's a lot of fun. But when it comes to making fun of Joshua, we do the exact same thing. So, like, it heightens it. Now we've got this third party here who has no context for anything we're talking about, but has already joined our side. <laughs> it feels like. So, I'm really enjoying that. So, shout out to Joshua for all the good that he does. But we love you, Josh. Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. We do. We love you with the love of Christ. There you biblical go. love for Amen. him, <laughs> not secular love. So yeah. Uh, so as far as the film itself is concerned, I thought we were going to lose more than we did, character wise. And at first, I was like, I don't know how it feels. Like, nope, this was a good send off to everyone on that team. In my opinion, like I said, I agree. Adam Warlock should have been utilized a little more, not only in this film but before. But that. Reality is what reality is here. So can't really complain too much about that. So is that going to be a volume four or like you Uh, think this was like the ending, like the wrap up? As far as James Gunn is concerned, yes. As far as certain characters, the potential to return, they're definitely coming back. Gotcha. And In fact, I know one for sure is based on some of the last words we see on screen. Ooh. Yeah. So I I think you'll enjoy it, Pang. You have anything else you want to add to this, Pablo? I mean, if you haven't watched the do take some tissue. There's a couple scenes that drive you a little crazy and, and helps you understand the background, uh, especially, you know, Rocket's background. You know, it's that was amazing they did that. I, I think, you know, not many people wanted to explore that. And, and I was just really grateful that they did. That was pretty cool. Oh, yes. And I do need to have a special shout out as I'm looking up the actor's name in real time. Uh, whoever played the High Evolutionary did a phenomenal job on uh, one of the uh, pinnacles of the character in the comics as a great villain. Uh, and I'm going to butcher his name, and I apologize. Uh, Chukwudi Iwuji. And I'm fairly certain that is not even close to being true. But shout out to you, man. That is one of the best villain performances I've seen in the MCU. And I really enjoyed that. So as far as ratings for this movie goes, I'll probably give it a nine. I would render. I, I think we typically do like a one to ten scale, so feel free to do whatever you want. Oh, if you want to rate, pretty, yeah, no, I think it's a pretty good nine. It's a good solid movie. It's not an entirely family. Okay. I wouldn't take my daughter to watch it. <laughs> you know, she'll be scared of some of the scenes, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Then, with that in mind, uh, Pang, the Little Mermaid trailer released not too far ago. Uh, what are your feelings on it? Yeah, so I'm very excited. I just wish that Ariel's hair was a little bit more red. But I have been told I don't see the color red very well. So maybe it's just me. So let me know if it's just me and the hair is fine. Like that's just like the like the most minuscule thing I can nitpick. Another thing that I'm not the biggest fan of, but I am a fan, but I'm not, but I am, but I'm not, but I am. Yes. If that makes sense. They took out the song Kiss the Girl because they want to show more like independence for women and whatnot. Like they we're being very careful of the Me Too movement, which is a very important like movement that needs to be talked about. Like I'm not undermining that movement. Yes. Whatsoever. But it's just one of those things. I I saw a comedian say um say it best on a TikTok because you know TikTok is where I get my news. It's not, but <laughs> jokes. Um the same winter that they canceled um what's it called? The 
Baby It's Cold Outside. Yes. And he was reading the lyrics. Was the same winter where the number one chart was like this super explicit like sex song pretty much. Yes. And so we're like canceling this song over here because it is into wondering, you know, like come stay a little longer. You don't have a choice, even though I think it's romantic banter for me personally. But then we're talking about like literally all the vulgar things over there and like witches and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, so have we lost our minds of what fights to fight? I don't know. That's a whole nother topic. Yes. Point is freaking kiss the girl. You know, everyone watches it. Like I said, I watched it so much growing on and like, you just want them to kiss. Like you're a little girl and you're just kind of like geeking out and your little heart and you just want them to kiss. But then they take it out because you got to give them verbal permission. It's called body language. That's what Ursula said. <laughs> body language. Yes. It's, like, it's, it's, that's a fun notion. And granted, yes, like the, the movement is big, but I just feel like I'm like, why are we choosing that agenda to play? Yes. But it, it is what it is. Like once again, Disney's going to do great. It's probably going to be a great movie. I just wish they would have stuck with the heart. Like Ariel literally fell in love with Eric, so she is fighting tooth and nail to go to the surface to make a deal with the devil, pretty much. And they are making it more of she wants to go to the surface for herself versus a man. And I get it. You don't need a man. You're a strong, independent fish. I get that. But you know, it's just tomatoes. I'm sure it's going to be great. I'm very excited to watch it, but we'll see. So once again, in this stellar episode of No Problems Whatsoever, we've encountered our 50th problem. And a part of that is, I think my internet's going out. I think Pablo's internet is going out. Um, and we have lost Pablo as a result of all that. I'm waiting to get back in contact with him. So we're just going to keep recording for now on, see what happens. So I apologize for the jankiness of this entire thing. But uh, I will go ahead and respond to what Peng was saying before we were rudely interrupted by this terrible internet issue we're having and i'll say that i agree with a lot of your points um as far as that song like i I get why people are upset especially in light of the me too movement like uh there's a huge issue in hollywood and across the world if we're being you know honest about it of of consent and of you know being uh safe in relationships being open in relationships to care about one another not have one person above the other letting only them get what they desire or men taking advantage of women to get what they want and treat them like trash and whatever, get whatever they desire instead of actually treating them like human beings. I don't think kiss the girl is where you need to draw your line. I mean, yeah. I mean, can we not talk about the fact that Ursula is, I mean, if they're following the original story going to essentially gain a relationship through, through lying and, there are some words I could use there to describe what that relationship would be if they actually consummated. So yeah, there, there's a lot of messed up stuff there. Don't just focus on that one thing. As far as the, the race lifting goes, I'm not a fan. I've never been a fan of it. Like, I mean, you go back, I mean, Hollywood has done it for years. We got this recent controversy with uh, an African playing Cleopatra in the documentary instead of, you no know, a, a Greek Macedonian woman, like it would have been a, a very inbred, I might add, Greek Macedonian woman in a time where Egypt had a very different racial structure than Africa exists now. Then, of course, uh, but even in the thing, ta- the king, she has like a sister who is of color, and like the the all different races in the '90s movie. So I even feel like yeah. her being African American is not a stretch. I'm pretty sure the dad is still white too. So yeah, from the trailer just, I saw, he did look at, but it was yeah. very dark, which was another mm-hmm. criticism I saw. So it's very hard to tell. So, I mean, in light of all that, like, there are better battles to fight, in my opinion. That's what I'm saying. Like, the little, yeah. literally, hashtag not my Ariel. I'm like, really? Really, guys? I, yeah. I'm i just concerned with Disney because one thing I did look, and I understand she's a fish, but her face be looking a little too fish-eyed. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> with, <laughs> So I was like, mm, that looks weird. But it could be the 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 graphics they were going with. But after watching Avatar Way of the Water and all those underwater scenes, I feel like The Little Mermaid is going to be underwhelming for me. Okay. Like, that's just my... Because Avatar Way of Water, it was beautiful. So beautiful. Captivated me all three hours. 
So, and then like just a little, like you said, it was dark, the trailer. So I'm just, I'm curious. Like, I'm very excited because it's Disney and Disney, we're going to ride or die. Like ever, like we're going to, <laughs> I'm going to see the mouse again in a few months. Like me and the mouse, we cool. Like, yeah. You can do very little for me to hate you, Mickey. Yeah. I love you. When are you going to see the mouse this year? Mm, I'll probably go again. I thought we were going to go in August, but now that we're doing um, Universal Studio Japan, Okay. Uh, that kind that kind of ate my budget a little bit, so we're gonna go see Harry the Japanese. But that's know. fine. So I think I think we're going in September. My family. I'm and gonna I. try and go, um, maybe like before the year ends. Yeah. So the summer is pretty much booked because I just sorry this is off topic, guys. It's okay. Want to know my? I mean, this is what's new in my life. I am going to Japan this summer in a couple weeks, and then I'm going to New York. So pretty much Disney keeps on going on the back burner. So yeah, to get back on topic a little bit, <laughs> I mean, Ariel is one of my favorite Disney princesses. So, I mean, it's one of those things. He's one of the reasons I have a thing for redheads, you know, alongside Mary Jane Watson and Jesse Bannon. But as far as casting goes, there's not that many redheads out there in existence. So I understand from a casting decision why you would change things. Once again, it's not my favorite thing in the world. At the very end of the day, you could dye someone's hair, whatever. It's it's an unwinnable fight. And like we brought up before, there are better battles to fight in this world. Like, look, they're doing it for the sake of diversity rather than actually caring about the characters for the most part. I'm sure there are some people who legitimately, when they're they're changing scripts like this, they actually care to, to an extent. But the companies themselves, they don't care. They want your money. And you will That's have not, my money, Disney. Yeah. And as far as live action goes, like I'm not even the target audience because like they, they never had my money to begin with in this regard. So they don't need to care about what I think because I don't care about live action Disney remakes. I would rather that they were going to do this, you know, do something do a new cartoon or something to that extent. But you know what? That's their decision. They're the multi-billion dollar company. I'm not. So that's it. Where I, that's where I stand. Anything else you want to add for Little Mermaid? Nope. I just can't wait to watch it. Be a good time. Uh, Okay, so moving on from there, we're going to go to our final topic of discussion today, and that is From. Peng, have you ever heard of From, the terribly named, really good show that I'm watching right now? It's named From? It's named From. Oh, I thought you just didn't finish your sentence in the outline. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a natural you know, idea to have because it is terrible trying to look this show up. On the internet, because it's like from, well, one of the most commonly used words in the English language. What platform is this on from? It is on, uh, it used to be Epics. I think it's MGM Plus now. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, given our usual discussions around obtaining things. We do not support that we want piracy. To watch, yes. Uh, that may be in use here. I cannot say for sure. But uh, from is one of those series. The first season uh, aired last year, if I remember correctly. And it takes place in this town that uh, essentially what happens is people end up coming there and it's separated from seemingly the whole of America. It is in its own place. They can't get out of, they can't escape. And if they try and go out, there are these things that come out at night and kill them. They're essentially like this weird kind of vampire zombie ghoul things. I actually think they're kind of drogger is my guess of what they actually are, because that's one of the mysteries of the show, that they have enough human-like characteristics to talk to people and mess with them in that regard. But yeah, it, it's a really weird series to describe because it's all about these people. Where did they come from? Why are they here now? Like, who's in charge of this? Is someone in charge? Like, because it doesn't seem like the monsters are the ones in charge. It seem like flunkies to some person we haven't met yet. It's a very fun, wacky series. And one of the things they do that I wanted to bring up in our discussion today is that they can live in houses while these things are out at night, but the only thing that protects them from them are these magical talismans. If they have it struck up on their door, then the things can't get inside and try to kill them. But if there is no such thing in place. They can walk wherever they want to. So I ask you, Pang, say you were placed, we were both placed in a scenario where the only way we could be safe involved applying a magical item like the talismans in the show. How would you and I wrestle with this as Christians when we see magic used in the Bible as always harmful? I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no hesitation. No, Just going for it. I mean, because it's not telling me to worship another God. It's like, if I want to survive, use this talisman. Okay, done. 
Now, if it is, if it said declare this talisman is God is your God and put it up, then I would be like, okay, no, I guess I'm dying. But you know, yeah, if you ain't making me worship another god. I'm like, shoot, let's use it. Yeah. So one of the things we don't know exactly why they work, and there's a lot of speculation that they may be like Nordic runes, and that'd be one of the reasons why these things might be Draugr from Norse mythology in that extent. So, yeah, I mean, in that situation, like this is provably the only way these things work. Well, I want to investigate that. What is it about them that works, that that protects me from these evil creatures out there? Is it actually magic? Is it some form of you know creative energy that God has left behind, and you, if you just know how to use it, you can actually access it to protect people or something like that. Is it actually magic, or is it something else? Who knows? Or is it pesticide? Is it pesticide? What I use for bugs. I don't <laughs> want them in my house. Hmm. So I mean, it could be a myriad of things. Who knows? But like, I mean, as far as scripture is concerned, and I know uh, Josh and I have actually talked about this on the show before. In certain regards, if I remember correctly, it had to do with stuff like. Um, uh, horoscopes and crystals and stuff like that. Like, are these things actually harmful? I'm on a camp that says yes. He's on a side that says maybe not. You know, they might just be harmless. So, uh, what's your feeling on that matter? Um, well, like crystals, crystals and energy. Like, you get a lot of mineral. Like, there's there's health benefits if you soak in a mineral bath. There's health benefits if you put some kind of tea extract in your lotion and stuff like that. So. By using what is of the earth that God has gave us dominion over, and you use that for like healing and whatnot, I don't see a problem with it. As long okay. as they're not claiming that this energy is from a different God or a different thing. I mean, like if it's of the earth, I have dominion over that. Like scripture already gave me that. So I see no problem with it because it's not going to have a hold. Okay. Well said. Well spoken. <laughs> I have a Bible degree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired. It's okay. So, I mean, as for me, I mean, I look at scripture and when I see magic, I see Jonathan John Bress in Moses's court, use it for their own ends, trying to replicate the plagues and failing miserably after a while because they can't replicate what God can. I see uh, the witch of Endor uh, trying to use necromancy to summon up Samuel's spirit. And there's some there's some debate. Was it actually his spirit? Was it a demon posing as Samuel? Was it an angel posing as him? Blah, blah, blah. We can debate that all day. But the point is, when God says not to do something, I tend to go, okay, let me stay away from that. And it may be a little legalistic of me in that sense. I'm more than willing to hear that side out on how that all works. But I would rather be safe as possible in that regard. Right. Well, with the with the Moses thing, they kept on saying like the by the power of Ra, and so that's where they claimed that their magic was from. Because you can even argue like God used, I mean Moses used God's miracles, which we call them miracles. We don't call them magic, but by the power of God, you know what I mean. Like, so I I feel like it's where you get your source from. Okay. Um, that's a good way of looking at it, and I think you may be conflating the Prince of Egypt with Scripture. I know, I know, I know. but I'm just saying like that. <laughs> That's, that was my thing. Which, like, but they, yeah, they yeah. it's still the same. I was just teasing. But that was, that's one of my favorite, what's it called, songs to sing along to. I'm glad you called that. Yes. A great movie. Playing with the big boys now. Yeah. So keep going. As far as this show is concerned from, like, if you have the opportunity to watch it, I would highly recommend it. There is some very frustrating stuff with people not talking to each other and not planning with each other. It's like, it's what I would like to do in a very deadly situation like this. You know what? Once again, like Pablo mentioned earlier, I'm not the one with the money. I'm not the one who wrote it. So mm-hmm. that's how I feel about that. So as but far as then, like any time in life and death situations, people always screw you up. So oh, yeah. I can see I haven't watched it, but I can see both sides. Like I'm going to communicate with no one because they're probably going to turn around and kill me. <laughs> I've thought I've thought about death day a lot. I've thought about every time, like just recently, my husband and I we were going on the cruise and we were like oh, waiting to go through like security and stuff. I pick out people who I would want on my team, like just like lost. I'm like that's my Hurley. He's gonna make me laugh. Like these people, <laughs> they have kids. Absolutely not. They will put the kids before the group. Like I like this is just like that's what I do for fun. I people watch. I'm like who who who's gonna like who's gonna be the fighters? I'm gonna be the strategist because you know do that, but. That's just how I'm wired. That makes me think of how things were at the height of the pandemic. And I was joking on Zoom calls with friends of how, you know, if if my Raider gang beat their Raider gang in a fight 
and I happen to see them. They're about to be, you know, killed for opposing us. The highest compliment I ever gave someone would be, no, spare that one. So that's it for From. I'll give it like an 8, 8, 5 out of 10 as far as everything else is concerned. So, yeah, that's it for that. So a very disjointed episode today of What's New. So if you stuck with us this whole time, thank you for your patience. Thank you for all you do. Uh, immensely frustrating. Hate to lose a guest that way. Hate for anything to happen this way. But that's just how the dice roll sometimes. So, guys, go ahead and check out our website at systematicecology.org you know, to see all the other things we have on there. You have our host. You want to check us up, see Pang and I and other episodes. You want to see... I mean, the poor Joshua, you made fun of this whole time. Uh, anyone else, you can suggest future episode topics to us. Joshua just put another one we just got into the schedule for later on. So your choices do matter about what we cover. So keep that in mind. Also as well, check out our Discord, our YouTube, our Patreon, uh, all that stuff to help us out with the show, help get garner more interest into it. And remember, we are all a chosen people, a geekdom of priests. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.